right? I was looking for Christmas presents. It was that time of year, and I thought, you know, my parents have to hide the presents somewhere. My mom was upstairs doing something. My dad was out. So I figured, you know what? Maybe it's in the crawl space in the basement. So opening these boxes, and all I'm finding is newspaper clippings and sympathy cards and letters about some kidnapping. I'm like, these aren't Christmas presents. That's What is this, right? So I look at one, and it says, uh, sad city drags on, hunt for missing child. And I look, and I see a picture of my mom and dad. They look really, really sad. And I see another headline, search drags on for Paul Joseph Franzak, kidnapped child. I'm all, Joseph Franzak, that, that's me. So I got all excited. I was like, this is cool, right? So I grabbed a few of the, few of the articles, and I ran upstairs to my mom. And I said, well, what's this about? What's this kidnapping? My mom turned around, and her face just turned red. And she looked at me and said, how dare you snoop around the house? Those aren't your things. And I said, yeah, but this is about me, right? And I guess she fig- fig- she realized I wasn't going to just walk away. So she said, you were kidnapped. We found you. We love you. We'll never talk about this again. The year earlier, my mom had a stillborn in that very same hospital. Oh. So now she's had two children, and she walked away from the hospital with none. Right. So that was really a crushing time. I, I can't even imagine the, the, the tragedy and just the feeling of despair that my mom and dad both had. But I never, I never really felt like I fit in. And the older I got, that became more apparent to me. I didn't look like them. I didn't act like them. I was drawn to things I was never exposed to. But, you know, the older you get, you start thinking about things like, what are the chances of me really being that kidnapped child? You know, taken from Chicago, found in New Jersey a year and a half, two years later. It just doesn't make any sense, honestly, right? Yeah. And then the the fact that they used the shape of my ear as the determining factor, it's kind of hard to believe, right? 2012 came along. Emma was three years old. And it was was really gnawing at me because I was thinking about the medical history and all this. Am Am I being a good father by not really knowing my medical history and if I'm really Paul? For my daughter, am I being genuine? Because how can I be the best father for my daughter if I really don't know who I am? How did you get those results? By phone. After I passed, he said, this is so-and-so from my dentogene. He said, your results are, there is no remote possibility that you're the child of Dora and Chester Franzak. Mm -hmm. Lily, even though I knew this, I knew this all my life. Once you hear it, it changes everything. I, I felt the color drain from my face. I got all sweaty. And I started thinking about everything I thought that was my life really wasn't. The Franzics raised me. They were amazing parents. They had this horrible tragedy happen to them. Their child was kidnapped. So I thought, I'm going to find their child. Right? It's the, they gave me the greatest gift, a nice life. I want to, re, I want to repay them by finding their kidnapped child. I had no idea what I was embarking on. I was so naive. When we met, we went and met Barbara Walters. She immediately took Emma and put her on her lap. She had coloring books for her. And she just, just played with Emma and talked to us like we were the only people in the world. And it made us feel really safe, secure. This is the person we're going to go with. And we did. Didn't you also, didn't, wasn't there signs of, of physical abuse on you? Yeah, when I was found abandoned, I had a cold and I had a black eye. Cold and a black eye. And you were probably, I mean, they have probably had to guess how old you were. You were around two-ish, less than two? So it turned out I was actually a twin. Because I was a twin, I was a little smaller for my age. So I was actually older than they estimated. And that's how this whole story has been. It's like one step forward, two steps back the extreme peaks where you're just elated beyond belief, and then just the abyss of just despair and tragedy. So when you were abandoned, Jill wasn't abandoned as well. Or, well, I suppose you didn't know because they didn't have easy DNA testing back then. What happened to Jill, do you think? It's a good question. So when I first started this journey, 
talking to real like close family that I've met and stories that I've heard, horror stories, I surmise that Jill might have been accidentally murdered or died. And my parents couldn't explain me. They couldn't explain one twin around the house. So that's why they abandoned me. But I've changed my mind over the things I've learned over the last couple of years about my parents. And I think that possibly they just got rid of her too, but she never made the news because she wasn't part of the Franza kidnapping, right? Oh, right. Just another child abandoned or left, whatever. So I really think she's alive. And I'm telling you right now on your show, I'm going to find her. They saved the hair, mm. pictures of me with the, with the family, you know, the, the foster family. So those are the first pictures I actually have of me growing up. And I was almost like, you know, two, three years old. You know, where most, most families have baby pictures. I don't have those. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you don't. You have, don't have the, a lot of information about the first couple of years of your life. Right. Also, if any of your listeners, anyone has any questions about what to do on their journey, how to get started, reach out to me because I've, I've knocked on doors. I've dug graves. I've done it all. This, we only have one shot in life. You can't live a lie and never leave any stone unturned. 